Live from Central Oklahoma, this is U Central News. Good evening, I'm Lauren Jackson. And I'm Ian Nickel. Welcome to this edition of U Central News. Earlier today, President Todd Lamb announced that Alan Wright will replace Art Cotton as Vice President of Advancement after Cotton was appointed to a new created position. Wright is a public... How do you know when you've made the right decision? A fair strategist with a master's degree in political science from UCO. The executive experience with Devon Energy Coast Industries as a chief of staff of the U.S. Congressman. Last week, President Lamb announced that Cotton would assume a new position as vice president of transformative leadership, a role created to help shape the existing president's leadership council and leaders of tomorrow programs. The FBI says it's investigating what appears to be an att attempted assassination of former president Donald Trump. It happened yesterday at the Trump International Golf Club in West Palm Beach. The former president and current Republican presidential nominee was not harmed. Leah Waldman is in Florida with the latest. At the end of the day, the suits have worked. Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw praising the Secret Service for spotting a rifle barrel sticking out of a fence 300 to 500 yards away from Trump. He did not get off any rounds, and that was because the Secret Service agent acted so quick. Still, questions remain. How was the outer perimeter, how was this shooter able to get to that outer perimeter, uh, an area that you know should have been identified as a vulnerability uh, previously? President Joe Biden expressing relief Monday morning. Thank God the president's okay. The suspect, 58-year-old Ryan Wesley Routh, is now facing two gun-related charges. An active Ukraine supporter and Trump critic law enforcement say they found at the scene an SKS-style rifle with a scope. There'll be additional charges more than likely when all is said and done, uh, but they certainly have enough right now to be able to charge him uh, with felonies and to be able to keep him in custody. The federal public defender representing Ralph declined to comment after the hearing. Ralph's son issuing a statement calling him a loving father. He says the reports doesn't sound like the dad he knows. For a second time in little more than two months, the 2024 race for the White House has been scrambled by an apparent assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump. CNN Washington correspondent Julia Benbrook has the latest on the response from the U.S. leaders. The FBI is investigating what appears to be an attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump at his Florida golf club over the weekend. Trump was not harmed in the incident. This is the second apparent attempt on Trump's life in a matter of months. The first one at a July campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. In an email to his fundraising list on Sunday, Trump said his quote, resolve is only stronger after another attempt on my life. Adding quote, I will never surrender. In a statement shortly after the shooting incident, his political opponent, Vice President Kamala Harris, wrote, quote, I am deeply disturbed by the possible assassination attempt of former President Trump today. As we gather the facts, I will be clear. I condemn political violence. We all must do our part to ensure that this incident does not lead to more violence. President Joe Biden, who also quickly condemned the violence, spoke to reporters Monday morning. Thank God. When pressed about what type of help they would need, Biden responded, I think we need some more personnel. Reporting in Washington, I'm Julia Benbrook. And the weather is looking pretty nice today. A little hot for my liking, but you know, it is what it is. Yes, I love this fall weather coming in. How about you, Ian? Yeah, it should be a good time. Let's toss it over to Gwyneth Duncan for more. Gwyneth.
Thank you and good evening Broncos. We're looking at 88 degrees and mostly sunny outside. We do have a light wind coming in from the east at 7 miles per hour, but overall it just feels pretty nice out there. Our humidity is moderate. We're sitting at 55% and our UV is at 4. It was at 8 today, so it may have felt hotter than it actually was when you guys were walking to class. But overall right now it's starting to feel better as we move into the night. As we look at reflectivity overall over the state, it's pretty dry. We're not looking at much, but we do have a low pressure system to the west of us. That's really not going to move anywhere. It's kind of stationary right now, so we're not going to see any of that rain. We're kind of just in a heat dome, so it's really not feeling too good out there, but I'll update you guys on how that's going to feel later in the week. As we go into our allergy index, we're looking at high tree pollen and high ragweed pollen. I've definitely felt it. I don't know if you guys have, but the mole spores are pretty low right now, but those are going to go up as we go throughout our week and as those rain, that rain chances start to go up. As we look ahead, we do have high 90s these next couple of days like we've been feeling in the past weeks. And then we do have a fall-like cold front moving in over the weekend. It's going to start to make everything feel better. We're going to have rain and thunderstorm chances over the weekend, which I know I'm super excited about. And then, like I said, 80s next week. This is one of many cold fronts we're going to get just moving into the fall season. It's going to start to make everything feel nicer. And I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited for that. So. I'll have your full weather updates later in the show. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you so much, Gwyneth. Poster Invasion is here. It is now on campus, located at the blue tent by the clock tower. Do not miss out on your chance to buy some cool posters. They are here for Homecoming 2024. Designs on the posters range from psychedelic to anime-themed posters. If you missed out on today's Poster Invasion, you will have until Wednesday, September 18th, to browse through and to think of some gifts to buy for your friends and family. Poster Invasion will be open from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. both tomorrow and Wednesday. The mid, the mid first at UCO is hosting a photography contest with an award of $500. If you are a winner, your photo will be displayed at the mid first bank located on campus. To enter, you must take a UCO photo of campus that must not focus on people. The photo will be due at 5 p.m. on December 6. Six winners will be selected and notified that they have received the award by January 6. For more information, you can visit UCO's Banking Center. The Edmond Police Department released its monthly overview for August, and there's been an increase in almost every category compared to July. The most significant stats from this past month are there were 286 arrests, 43 more than July and a 37% increase, 136 traffic collisions, a 36% increase from last month, and in those traffic collisions were 99 injuries, which is a 191% increase from this past month. There was also 38 DUIs, which is five more than there were in July. And, you know, Gwyneth had it, mentioned it earlier, you know, it's going to be a little hot, but that fall weather is going to come. Yes, and I am so excited for pumpkin spice themed stuff and pumpkins. How about you? Oh, for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun. Get those cool t cooler temperatures and wear hoodies a bunch. When we get back, Gwyneth will have much more on weather. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking, now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead, catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. making plans you are the best what about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family or your daughter's first costume party it was out of this world the same way you plan each detail for those moments start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster sign up for local weather and emergency alerts prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan protecting your family is the best plan you can make 
Expanding horizons, making room for the new, the modern frontier is calling for you. Attractions, adventure, excitement, and thrills. A convergence of culture and spectacular places. Open skies, open minds, and wide open spaces. Connect to innovation. Connect to creativity. Connect to opportunities. Connect to friendship. <laughs> connect to all this and more when you connect to Central. It's 88 degrees, mostly sunny like I mentioned. We do have a light east wind coming in and our, our humidity is moderate. We're sitting at 55%. As we look at across the state, we're looking at upper 80s into the 90s overall. It's feeling kind of hot. We're sitting at 87 degrees in OKC. It's not feeling the best out there, but as we move into tonight, it's going to feel a lot better. We're going to be sitting at 66 degrees and clear. That wind still is going to remain the same southeast. Really low winds. It's going to feel really nice, but you you might need a coat just for how cold it's going to be out tonight. We're going to be sitting at 67% with our humidity, and that humidity is pretty high. It's going to carry into tomorrow. As we look across the state tonight, it's going to be mid to upper 60s. It's going to feel overall really nice, a lot better than it did out today. And as we look at tomorrow, starting off at 7 a.m., cool, 66 degrees. That sun is going to be out. The thing that's really going to get us about tomorrow is it's going to be humid. It's going to feel a lot hotter because of that. And if you have curly hair, I'm sorry, but it's not going to be the best day for you. As we move into noon, we're sitting at 80 degrees. Like I said, that humidity is carrying throughout the day. It's not going to feel the best. It's going to feel really sticky out there. And at 7 p.m., we're going to be sitting at 86 degrees. As we move across the state tomorrow, it's going to be upper 80s into 90, 90s again. But because of that humidity, like I mentioned, it's going to feel a lot hotter than it did today. As we look ahead, like I said, we have a fall cold front moving in over the weekend. That's really going to bring relief to like our that's really going to bring relief to our temperatures as we move into this next week where we're going to feel 80s pretty much every day, which is what fall should be. As we move into our seven day, we're sitting at 89 degrees tomorrow, Wednesday, 93. Like I said, these next couple of days are just going to be the same as they have been this past week. But then over the weekend, we get into our cold front and I'll describe that more to you later. But how do you guys feel about this weather? Because I'm so excited and I love it. But how do you guys feel? Like I said earlier, I love the fall weather. I love the rain. Do you like the rain, Ian? Yeah, the rain's nice. It kind of de depends on if I'm going out or not. If I'm going out, I'm like, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to see that. I'd rather be driving, <laughs> you know, clear conditions. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I'm on my couch all day, I'll definitely enjoy that rain. Oh, I agree. When we come back, Jeremy Ramirez has your social media update for a special moment from the Emmys and more. Happy birthday. Make a wish. Miss you guys. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Are you really sure this is all going to fit? <laughs> oh, it'll fit. I got that. All right. When hauling anything, ensure it's secure. 
losing your load is dangerous for all drivers. We want everyone to make it home safe. Help make Oklahoma safe by securing your load. hosted the 76th annual Emmy Awards last night, with Shogun dominating the night with a record-breaking 19 awards for the series. Anna Sawai and Hiroyuki Sanada became the first actors of Japanese descent to win an Emmy in their respective categories. The series' Instagram account shared a post of both actors, along with the rest of the cast, celebrating their historic win after the event. This is to all women who expect nothing and continue to be an example to everyone, said Sawai in her acceptance speech. Former President Donald Trump took to social media on Sunday, condemning pop music star Taylor Swift's endorsement of Vice President Kamala Harris. I hate Taylor Swift, read the former president's remarks. Trump's comments are in response to Swift's September 11th endorsement of Vice President Harris on Instagram. Swift's post also urged first-time voters to register to vote and to do their own research. Swift added that her endorsement was in response to Trump's decision to post AI-generated images of Swifties for Trump falsely suggesting the artist had endorsed his campaign. Princess Diana's youngest son celebrated his 40th birthday last Sunday. The British royal family commemorated his day by sending Prince Harry birthday wishes on X. Prince William also marked the special occasion by sharing the royal family's tweet. When BBC News asked Prince Harry about the milestone, he said, I was anxious about 30, but I'm excited about 40. Prince Harry shared that he has no large plans for a large event, but did say that he planned on spending the day with his wife, American actress Meghan Markle, and their two kids at their Montecito, California home. Back to you guys at the desk. Well, I hope the prince has a great 40th birthday. When we come back, Dylan has your sports update with, a, with the looks at a huge, massive upset in UCO football this weekend. And we'll look ahead to matchups for both OU and OSU heading into conference play this weekend. More coming up next. I was raised to believe in the power of possibility, to always move forward, but never forget where I came from, to value hard work, ingenuity, and hospitality. On one hand, my people are rough and rugged. On the other, refined and elegant. They taught me how to love beautiful things and cherish my past, to seek out adventure, eat well, and to have a good time. So I keep their traditions alive every place I go. They call me Oklahoma City, but you can call me the modern frontier. Central News as a whole, you got to be in those different areas, like being on camera, being off camera, being in the control room. And so I feel like that is what prepared me most about being in the workplace. U Central and the Mass Comm Department has provided me all the tools and the fundamentals that are needed in order to thrive well and thrive fast at my job. Maybe it's time to hit the road and visit a place where stories unfold. This is the land of the ultimate road trip with sights old and new on Route 66. There's fun to be had, so much to do, and a few new surprises before you get through. Oklahoma has the most miles to share of Route 66. It's really quite rare. TravelOK.com will show you the way. Come see for yourself this iconic highway. Hello everyone, I am Dylan Hibbard with your daily sports update. 
UCO football had a massive weekend with an upset over the number two ranked team in Division II Central Missouri Mules. The Chos had a total of 731 yards of offense with multiple school records being broken. Quarterback Jet Huff set the record for the most completions in a single game with 42. Receiver Terrell Davis also set a school record for receptions in a single game with 14. Central Oklahoma is 2-0 for the first time since 2014 and the first time under head coach Adam Durrell. The Broncos are ranked number 25 in the latest D2.com rankings. The Broncos will travel to Nebraska Kearney this week to take on the Lopers. On Saturday, the kickoff is scheduled for 7 p.m. at Ron and Carroll Cope Stadium. UCO Volleyball is off to an amazing start after going 4-0 this past weekend in St. Augustine, Florida at the Flagler Saints Classic. The Broncos outscored opponents 12-1, sweeping three of those contests. Senior middle blocker Jenna Karp led the Broncos in kills with 45. Junior outside hitter Sydney Huck was just behind Karp with 44 kills of her own. Volleyball is now 9-0 on the season and looks to keep up what is an undefeated record on the line this week in the MIAA and GAC crossover with the Chos scheduled to play four games this Thursday through Saturday, headlined by games against Oklahoma Baptist and East Central on Friday. All games are at Hamilton Fieldhouse, so go out and support your Broncos. UCO Soccer has an up and down start to their season. They are currently 2-2 two two with wins against Southwestern Oklahoma State and Angelo State. The Broncos hosted number 12 ranked Dallas Baptist on Sunday, but would fall to the Patriots with a final score of 3-4. In the Broncos four games thus far, eight different players have scored a goal with middle fielder Rebecca George leading the way with three and freshman four Khalil Carter with two. The Broncos will look to steer the ship the right way, though, with two matchups later this week on Wednesday at Tom Thompson Field against Southern Nazarene. Starting time is at 7 p.m. And on Sunday evening on the road against Oklahoma Christian, start time is scheduled for 8.15 p.m. On to the Division I football. The Pokes and Sooners will open up conference play this weekend. College game day will be in attendance for the 15th ranked Sooners' first SEC game as they will host the number six ranked Tennessee Volunteers. Sooners are coming into SEC play 3-0 with wins over Tulane and Houston. This will be the Sooners' first real test of the season with the Volunteers averaging 639 yards per game of offense while scoring an average of 63 in their first three games. The Sooners' offense hasn't been as dominant, only averaging 325 yards and 33 points per game. Kickoff is set for Saturday at 6.30 p.m. on ABC. The 14th ranked Cowboys will start Big 12 play Saturday as well with number 12 Utah coming into Stillwater in a highly anticipated matchup. Utah's offense is expected to miss quarterback Cam Riding for the second straight week with injuries. The Pokes offense coming into this game averaging 446 yards and 52 points per game. The story for the Pokes has been the lack of rushing game from running back star Ollie Gordon with Gordon only averaging 33.5 yards per carry in three games thus far. Kickoff for this game is set at 3 p.m. on Fox. I don't know about you guys at the desk, but it looks like this college football weekend, I will be sitting on my couch all weekend. What about you guys? Oh, yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal week for college football. Uh, just got games back to back to back. I mean, for the state of Oklahoma, yes. you're going to be on the couch from 3 to 10 p.m. Yes, and you get to have the fun football snacks and hang out with family. Oh, of course. After the break, what one senior citizen is doing to help get students get new school supplies. And Gwyneth will have our last look at weather. Commercials are fake. What you're feeling isn't. Call or text 988, Oklahoma's mental health lifeline.
The University of Central Oklahoma grows and thrives. We move forward, daily living the Bronco way, being reflective of our neighborhood, community, history, and Oklahoma. This is what has made us who we are. Oklahoma's Metropolitan University, the third largest university in Oklahoma. This is where movement is. This is the University of Central Oklahoma. School supplies can get expensive for students and parents, but who knew that playing bingo could help those in need? Every Wednesday at Hermitage Roanoke, oh, 074. The seniors play bingo. Each time 99 year old Martha McMullen wins, bingo. She puts her quarters in a piggy bank. Okay, so you go. I would say I average a dollar and a half or two dollars a week. For a year, McMullen saved her bingo money to make a difference in the community. Because I knew that there were probably children that wouldn't have something that they needed. As a former fourth grade teacher, her mission was to buy school supplies for students at Fairview Elementary School. Oh, 68. Other residents joined and together they collected around $500. McMullen printed out the fourth grade school supply list and bought 24 of everything she crossed off, even the things she didn't know. I understand now they use a lot of technology, tablets and computers and they use the earbuds with those but I didn't even know what earbuds were. <laughs> when the list called for four composition books per child, McMullen went above and beyond, buying 96 notebooks, enough for every single fourth grader. It alleviates a lot of the stress and anxieties mm -hmm. that might um, come with maybe some embarrassment of not having those supplies mm -hmm. um, and just being able to provide those without question. The teachers were deeply touched by McMullen's thoughtful gesture. And I think that heart can really only come from someone who's seen it firsthand and seen the kids who didn't have it and wanting to make sure that they were provided for. For McMullen, knowing she is helping students succeed is the most rewarding part. The fact that they are children that need them and now they have them, that's really meaningful. All on the O. For now, she will continue playing bingo until she finds her next project. And that, that's a heck of a story right there. When's the last time you played bingo? I actually played bingo last night with my friends. Really? Yes, I did. It, what a coincidence, actually. I love bingo. That's hilarious. I haven't played in so long. If they were giving out cash prizes like they are in that story, definitely would. Let's toss it to Gwyneth for our last look at weather. Gwyneth, go ahead. Thank you guys and looking at that seven day like I said upper 90s these next couple of days just mid to upper 90s like we've been feeling these past couple of weeks as we go into Friday night though we're looking at 30% chance of rain this is when the cold front starts to move in we're going to see rain pretty much every day over the weekend just because of that cold front and then it's finally just going to get cooler for next week and that's when fall really starts. Thank you guys and back to you at the desk. Thank you Gwyneth and uh what heck of a first show, first show of the fall semester in the books. Yes, so exciting. Yeah, uh, so we will see you tomorrow. You guys have a great rest of your evening. For now, I'm Ian Nickel. And I'm Lauren Jackson. Have a great night, everybody.